Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Today, in the Dominican Order, we celebrate the memorial of St. Agnes of Montepulciano, virgin and nun of the order of preachers. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who adorned your bride Agnes with a wonderful ardor for prayer, grant that by imitating her with hearts fixed always on you, we may be able to attain the abundant reward of devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported what the chief priests and elders had told them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Sovereign Lord, maker of heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, you said by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage, and the peoples entertain folly? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the princes gathered together against the Lord and his anointed. Indeed, they gathered in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do what your hand and your will had long ago planned to take place. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And as they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Why do the nations rage, and the peoples utter folly? The kings of the earth rise up, 
and the princes conspire together against the Lord and his anointed. Let us break their fetters and cast their bonds from us. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. He who is throned in heaven laughs, the Lord derides them. Then in anger he speaks to them, he terrifies them in his wrath. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. If you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher <clears throat> who has come from God, for no one can do these signs you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man, once grown old, be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb to be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today, again, as Dominicans, we celebrate the feast day of one of our own, uh, St. Agnes of Montepulciano, um, one of the most famous, perhaps the single most famous of our uh, Dominican uh, cloistered contemplative nuns. Um, Agnes was born in, in Tuscany in central uh, Italy um, in the mid part of the 1200s. So. Uh, literally just a couple decades after um, the order was, was founded. And uh, as is often the, the case with saints, they say that she had a profound faith and piety and holiness from her childhood. At the age of six, she first expressed to her parents that she wanted to become a nun. Uh, that was a little early. There's uh, all kinds of miracles surrounding her both before and after uh, she eventually did enter religious life. At some point, again, in her early childhood, age seven, eight, something like that, she was walking with her mother through uh, their town or one of the towns nearby. And, um, uh, and apparently, 
there was a, a house of, of ill repute uh, in the area where they were walking by, and as they neared it, uh, this whole flock of black birds or crows appeared out of nowhere and began attacking Agnes. And her mother said, this is, these are our devils, this is the presence of evil. And Agnes said a prayer and they went away. And, and she kind of made a commitment to herself to sanctify that place. And years, years, years later, um, she eventually founded a convent um, on that very site where that happened. And so her own prophecy as a small child was fulfilled. Um, she eventually did uh, get the blessing of her parents to enter religious life uh, at the age of nine. We don't do that anymore today, but uh, back then this would, this would sometimes happen. So she entered actually a Franciscan uh, convent that was right near her, her home, a very rigorous Franciscan convent. And she spent some number of years there, eventually rising up uh, to, by, by the time she was a teenager into pretty important positions in that convent. Um, but at some point she came to know and hear about uh, the Dominicans and the Dominican friars. Um, and when she did, she, she became kind of enamored with their particular vocation. And so she and, and her entire convent of sisters uh, actually crossed over, transferred over, and, and became Dominican, uh, Dominican nuns. And so she, the last latter decades of her life, she was a, a Dominican nun, and uh, the last 17 years of her life, she was the prioress of the monastery. Uh, and there were all kinds of miracles associated with her. You know, there were miracles of levitation. She would often levitate several feet off the ground when she was praying. Uh, one time when, when she was first elected prioress, uh, it said that these little white, almost flakes in the shape of crosses uh, literally were falling from the sky uh, in that area. Um, towards the end of her life, uh, she raised through her prayers a child who had drowned uh, by praying uh, for the child. She raised the child back to life. Um, there was, uh, she had visions of our Lord visions of our Blessed Mother, one of the famous visions, sometimes depicted in art. Our Blessed Mother appeared to her holding the Christ child and actually handed the Christ child to St. Agnes. Um, the baby was in, in swaddling clothes, but with some kind of a gold cross on a chain around his neck. And Agnes had this period of time where she was able to cradle the Christ child and. As one account of this miracle said, when the Blessed Mother uh, gestured that it was time, you know, to hand, hand the baby back, that Agnes was reluctant to do so. <laughs> um, but eventually she did, but then when she came out of the vision, uh, that cross on the chain that was around the baby Jesus' neck, um, she was still holding that cross physically uh, in her hands. Um, and then another, maybe the last of well, maybe two more uh, other miracles. There were a lot of miracles attributed to prayers at her tomb after her death. In fact, at the moment of her death, it was said that all of the small children in all of the surrounding towns all at once began speaking to their parents about Agnes. And this was instantaneously at the moment of her death, as if all the small children in all the area um, as it were, had seen uh, the passing of her soul from this, from this life to the next. Uh, many miracles were worked at, at her tomb. Uh, her body was completely incorrupt. Uh, famously, St. Catherine of Siena, many decades later, went on pilgrimage to pray uh, before the incorrupt body of St. Agnes. And in another scene, famously depicted in art, um, it said when Catherine very reverently went down uh, uh, to, to kiss uh, the foot of St. Agnes, uh, that the foot lifted, um, lifted up uh, to make it easier for Catherine to, uh, to kiss it. So a lot of miracles associated with, with St. Agnes. Um, but the one that's also pretty well known, often depicted in art, but I think most relevant 
for us today is, uh, and I don't know all of the context, but again, this is depicted in art quite often, that there's a, a miracle at least once when Agnes was prevented from being able to receive communion um, and her guardian angel appeared to her and gave her communion. And again, this is an image that's, that's depicted in art, one of the famous images of St. Agnes. And obviously I think it's clear why I shared that particular miracle here at the end of this homily. Uh, for all of you who I know are longing with everything that is within you um, to receive our Lord physically, his body and blood, once again in the Eucharist, um, that when it's not possible, again, to unite our hearts as fully as we possibly can to our Lord Jesus. And maybe, at least today, inspired by St. Agnes, when you, you pray your spiritual communion, as it were, before or after, just uh, close your eyes um, and ask your guardian angel, maybe to deliver this grace, this grace of the Eucharist to you uh, by the hands of your angel, uh, to draw you closer to our Lord, but also draw you closer to your guardian angel, who is, um, you might say, your best friend and your great defender here on this earth. St. Agnes of Multipulciano, pray for us. St. Agnes of Multipulciano, draw us closer to our Eucharistic Lord. Amen. We bring our petitions before the throne of our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Church throughout the world. We pray for Pope Francis. We pray for Archbishop Blair. We pray for bishops and priests everywhere who are doing their best to try to minister to their flocks under these circumstances, that the Lord might guide all of their decisions, their actions, and their ministries. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our political leaders, government officials, all those involved in uh, the decision-making about our civil society and the restrictions that are in place. We pray that they might be enlightened uh, by true wisdom. They might be motivated by charity, justice, and prudence in all of the actions and decisions they make. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of the sick who are suffering from this virus and all of the after effects of the virus that they might be brought to full and complete healing. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of those who are out of work, those who've been laid off, furloughed, had their hours or pay cut. We pay for, pray for all those who've lost benefits that they had through their jobs, for all those who are out of work and struggling financially in these difficult times, that they might receive the assistance they need and might soon be, soon be back in a position to have gainful employment to support themselves and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our heroes, our healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, assistants, those who work in nursing homes, hospices, senior care centers. We pray for all those who are still working and staffing uh, our postal service, our grocery stores, other necessary businesses, those who are involved in trucking and transportation, our police, firefighters, paramedics, all of our first responders. For all these, that the Lord might keep them safe and bring peace to their hearts and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those needs that rest in our own hearts, that we as people of faith bring with us to this Holy Mass. For all of these intentions, and for all of our faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know all of our needs, and trusting Father in the perfection of your love, your wisdom, and your goodness, 
we bring you all of our prayers and make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May we receive, O Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from old earthly ways, and through the example of blessed Agnes, be renewed by growth in heavenly grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes of Multiple Giano, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Leonard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the Teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity <clears throat> in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. some silence where you can make a favorite spiritual communion. Pray spiritual communion from St. Alphonsus Liguri. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The wise virgin has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, Turn us away from the cares of this fleeting world, so that by following the example of blessed Agnes, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth, and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God,
cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.